Hi, Paul from PowerWashStore.com here. Gonna run through the Control Wizard real quick. Uh, kind of go through some of the features. This is our two function remote. This particular one is set up to do a 12 volt circuit and a 120 volt circuit. I'm gonna start over here at the battery. Coming out of the Control Wizard, we have a orange cord here. This is your power to feed the Control Wizard. So I have the white wire, which is gonna be your positive lead, and the black wire, which is gonna be ground. Uh, there does come with here. You can see we have a little bag here. This is an inline fuse that you would put with it uh, It just uh, crimps right on the end. You have the eyelets to connect to the battery I don't put that on beforehand because if you need to make this wire shorter or longer you would end up just cutting it anyway um, Coming out of the out of the uh, box here We have a 12 volt switch circuit and this is the 120 volt circuit that I'm going to show how we hook that up to the booster pump um, Also in the bag. There's a little remote mount antenna which goes on the side here. We put an external antenna on there to give us extra range. That gives us range up to about a mile and a half, consistently turning it on and off. Um, anything longer than that, we get about an 80 to 90% uh, uh, accuracy rate as far as on-off functions. Comes with two two-function remotes. Um, these are an A channel and a B channel. Um, the way this is wired up, it actually won't do anything unless you turn the power button on to turn on the remote. You can see that that lights up. We have our, um, our A channel uh, relay and our B channel relay. Now what these switches will allow you to do is to actually manually um, engage the switches here at the box or um, you can engage the item at the unit itself or with the remote. So you have the ability to have three different ways to turn it on and off. So if something were to happen where this fails, you could still use the original on off on your unit. Um, if you lose the remote, you can still turn it on and off here at the unit itself, or you can use the remote. So the only way the handheld remote will work is if you turn the power button on in the middle. And when we open it up on the inside, you can kind of see here, we have a voltage regulator and you can see when I turn it on and off, how it changes. And the light lights up on our board. We have our A function. And you see the little light goes on, that turned on our A remote. We have our B function and that turns on our, our, our B relay. So we have a 12 volt relay and a 110 relay. We can uh, convert this to be either momentary contact for start stop applications or we can convert it to be um, both 110 or both 12 volt, uh, whatever you might need. So uh, coming out of the box, we have a 12 volt here and there's three wires in here, a black wire, a white wire and a green wire. The green wire is extra, uh, you don't need that, it would actually just be cut off. The black and white wire are switched. It doesn't really matter which way you hook it up with the black wire or the white wire because it's a switch. You could hook it up either direction, it's not gonna matter. Um, we also have the 121 on this particular one and I'm gonna show you how you would hook that up with a booster pump. So if we have uh, two different types of booster pumps that we make, we have the stay right one which uses a regular on off switch and we have the Gould booster pump, which uses this toggle switch. So on, on the unit itself, when you get it, you'll see basically two wires running to your switch, you know, like that, however, however the wires are. Color doesn't matter, they might be black, they might be red, they might be blue, they might be orange. Um, it doesn't really matter which way they are coming in, just so you use the two wires that go into the switch. So in this particular case, I have these two wires running into an on-off switch just like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two wires, which would have been the, the black and the white. In this case, I've taped it off the black to avoid confusion. But we have a black and a white wire coming out of our 120 volt circuit. I'm going to take the two wires that were on the switch. I'm going to remove them from the switch. And I'm just going to take one of the wires. And I might use an eyelet like this to put them together. And then I would crimp that. And I'll take the other wire. And again, it doesn't matter which direction you do this because it's a switched. And I would take those on there and I would put those together just like that and crimp them on, put them back onto my switch, tighten them on. So you can see I have two wires running into it. This allows me to use this to turn it on and off. Or if I use the remote, I could turn it on and off with the remote, actually the B channel. Or I could turn it on and off right here with the push button. So that's one way, that's the way basically what we're doing is we're creating a bypass for the switch. Now if you have the, um, 
The Gould booster pump, you're going to see a switch that's like this, where it has two spade terminals on it. Again, you would have basically two wires running to it. Doesn't, and again, it doesn't matter which side these are on. They could be like this, or they could be like this. It doesn't really matter. It's just a switch. So you're going to take the two wires that are off. You're going to, again, put um, a spade end connector on there, a female spade connector on. Same thing. You're going to take the other wire, put the female spade connector on there. And again, after you put it on, you're going to crimp it so it doesn't fall off like they are for me uh, in the video here. And then we'll just basically plug those into each of the spade terminals. And again, that'll allow us to use this to turn it on and off. We can use the remote to turn it on and off, or we can use the switch to turn it on and off. And this remote will only work if this switch is on. Right now, this remote does absolutely nothing. I have to power up the circuit board with this on-off switch in the middle to make the relays activate. Now inside of the box, we do have this voltage regulator and that's there to protect it from voltage surges so we don't cook out our board. If the voltage drops too low or too high, this actually regulates it. And by pushing these particular buttons on the side here, you can see I can control the amount of voltage going into the board. So that's 9.9 .9 volts right now. I don't want to be that low because it won't actually activate my relays. I want to be as close to 12 volts as I, I can. And if my battery, in this case, this battery's a little bit low, that's why I'm only getting 11.3 volts. Um, I'm going to keep going up and pushing the up button here until I can get up to 12 volts. So you see it's not doing anything anymore because it's, it's, uh, I don't have any more than 11.3 volts in there. So I'm going to actually go back down and push this button until I hit, there I saw it drop, now it dropped to 11.2. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push this one, two, three more times and that will actually put me up around 11 and a half volts. Anywhere between 10 and 13 volts is okay on this board, but you wanna to try to keep it at 12 volts. Between 11 and 12 volts is really where you wanna be. Um, waterproof case, you can lock it up. You can mount it to the wall. Uh, it does have mounts with it and um, all self-contained and this does have a very long range and, and you do have the ability to expand down the road and add different things if you want to convert that to two 110 circuits if you want to use this to control uh, some 12 volt LED lights you can do that as well and it works you have to have a, a 12 volt power source for the remote itself so that's uh, the basics of the control wizard uh, by water dragon Available at the Power Wash Store, 855-351-9274.